हॅलो फ्रेंड्स आय संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स इन दिस व्हिडिओ सेशन आय एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू द कन्सेप्ट ऑफ सिक्वेन्शियल ऑर्गनाइज्ड डेटा स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज वन ऑफ द टाईप ऑफ डेटा स्ट्रक्चर अँड युअर आय एम गिव्हिंग यू द डिटेल्स अबाउट सिक्वेन्शियल ऑर्गनाइज डेटा स्ट्रक्चर बिफोर मुव्हिंग टू द कंटेंट आय वुड लाईक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सबस्क्राईब माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स अँड कीप द बेल रिंगिंग now let's start with the concept of sequential organized data structure the first point is data structure utilizes memory which is allotted sequentially that's why the name is given sequential organized data structure it utilizes memory in a continuous way as the memory is allotted sequentially it utilizes the same memory continuously with the help of index and it allocates memory statically as well so that's why these data structures are also called as static data structure that is at the time of compilation the memory is get allotted to these data structures and at the end as per the requirement the data structures can't expand or shrink in size this is the disadvantage of sequential organized data structure so for example if i am going to allocate a memory for array size 50 and if i want to access the elements more than 50 we can't expand the size as well as now currently if i don't have any need to accept the 50 values for that array so at that time i can't shrink the size so this this is the disadvantage of sequential organized data structure so now let's see the example of sequential organized data structures they are arrays basically arrays of type integer or of type character or of type float or array of structure so any type of array will be the example of sequential organized data structure now let's see what is an array array data structure now is it array is a collection of data with different data types can you think about this no it's totally wrong so what is an array array is nothing but the collection of elements with the same data types now let's see the example for example array of integers where you can see that this is nothing but the all values are of type integer second one second example array of characters that all the elements are of type character so in this way if you want to form the collection of the elements of same data type then i will go with an array now the array elements are stored in a memory that are nothing but in a continuous way now let's see what is 1d array this 1d array is also called a single dimensional array this one is represented by one that is single and d is represented by dimension so 1d is nothing but single dimensional array now let's see the syntax how to declare the 1d array so for the declaration in c++ we supposed to write down its data type of which you are going to store the elements in the, into the array the name of array as well as the array size in the subscript that is in opening and closing bracket now let's see the example if you want to declare an array of size 5 of type integer it means that this array a is holding the five values of type integer and this will get allocate a memory sequentially which will hold the five integer values currently it's only the declaration that's why it will not hold any value in the same way if you want to declare any character array of size 7 this can be represented by like this and you just have to keep in mind that the memory is get allotted which is in a continuous manner now let's see 2d array where this 2d stands for two dimensional array or it is also called as array of array why it is called as array of array that i'll explain you with the example first of all let's see the syntax of 2d array well just same as of 1d array data type you have to mention you have to mention the name of array as well but the difference is that in 1d array there was only a single dimension here 2d array we supposed to mention two dimensions both the dimension both the dimensions are row size and the column size respectively 
how many rows can be there and for in every row how many columns are there so let's see the example for example i want to declare an array where four number of rows are there and three number of columns are there and all that values will be of type integer then the array will be look like this where you can see that it is having four rows that are starting from 0 1 2 and 3 and three number of columns in every row now can you think about how many elements it can hold this array how many elements it can be hold so this we can calculate by multiplying the size that is how many rows and number of columns are there with the multiplication of that that many numbers i can store so here 4 3s are 12 so that's why here you can see that the total 12 values i can store in this 2d array and every element will be of type integer now let's see why it is called as array of array this is nothing but first array row 0 is nothing but first array having three values row 1 is nothing but another second array third array and fourth array so this is nothing but the collection of array that's why it is also called as array of array now let's see one example over here so this is nothing but the code in c plus plus and here i am going to explain you the three concepts how to declare array elements or array how to initialize array elements and how to access array elements and to, to explain the concept of accessing array elements i have used the display uh, method to access the array elements so let's see about 1d array this is the c plus plus code uh, where uh, I have just declared the array, initialize array and displayed the content of array. So this is nothing but the statement where I have declared the array which we have seen already in the previous slide. Now initialization is nothing but I am going to initialize the values to this 1D array. The size is 5 so that's why I can store the 5 values and the next thing is to how to access the array elements so to access the array elements i have to use the index i here index i i have used with the help of for loop because it allocates memory continuously and with the help of index i can access all the elements array of if i i is having holding value 0 then array of 0 then after incrementing i after checking the condition if it is true it will go for the next index position is nothing but 1 and then it will access the array of 1 and so on so it will access all the 5 elements of the array now let's see about 2d array with respect to 2d array here you can see that is nothing but the declaration in the declaration i have mentioned that both the dimensions of sides 3 by 3 that is 3 rows and 3 columns so how many total values I can store in this array? 3, 3 is a 9 and here you can see that this is nothing but the initialization of all 9 values to the matrix. Yes, it is also called as matrix or it is a 2D array, array of array. To access the 2 dimensional array, here you can see that I, can, I have to use the for loop which are nested. The outer for loop will work for the uh, accessing the row position and the inner for loop will be helpful to access the column position and that's why while accessing the array elements here you can see that both the dimensions i can use that is i is for the row position and j for the column position and in this way i can access all the nine values when i is zero it will for i equal to 0, it will work for j equal to 0, j equal to 1 and j equal to 2. Then it will go outside outer for loop i plus plus. For i is equal to 1, it will go for 0, 1, 2 of all j values. So in this way, it will access all the values of the array. And here you can see that how the memory allocation is done in a sequential organized data structure. So for 1D array as we have seen in the previous example the array is of size 5 and now we have initialized the values 5 to the array and how it is uh, the memory is get allotted here you can see that the memory is allotted in a sequential way here we have considered that for every integer value we can uh, store every integer value and it requires 2 bytes to store every integer value so array of 0 it started with 65510 is nothing but the base address of the array 
array of 1 will be at after 2 bytes then 2 after 2 bytes and so on so in this way the memory is get allotted in a sequential way in a continuous way that's why is nothing but the sequential organized data structure now let's see 2d array now here the example is 3 by 4 by 3 matrix so total 12 values are there and how it will get allotted the memory here you can see that this is nothing but the array of array this is called also called as the matrix or array of array or a 2d array here you can see that this is nothing but my zeroth row is nothing but my zeroth array first row is nothing but my first array second row second array third row third array and every row in every array you can see that how many values are uh, residing three values because the three columns are there column 0 column 1 column 2 how to access the array elements here you can see the index position from the row 0 column 0 the index is 0 0 from row 0 column 1 index position is 0 1 from row 0 column 2 index position is 0 2 and so on so this red line shows us the partition of the rows row 0 ends here row 1 ends here row 2 ends here and row 3 ends here you can see the address locations again they are in a continuous way for every element it requires 2 bytes and in this way it will allocate total 12 multiplied by 2 because we have considered that 2 bytes for every element 12 multiplied by 2 is equal to 24 so it allocates total 24 bytes for this 2d array or after declaration of this 2d array in a continuous manner so in this way sequential organized data structure allocates a memory in a continuous way so thank you friends for listening and watching this video if you like the content and the video please do not forget to give the comment here i am providing you the subscription link for my channel tech talks along with this i am providing you the shortcut for more videos for the data structure along with the playlist of data structure happy data structuring happy learning thank you